Great Lakes coastal wetlands are a unique wetland type that have formed either at the mouth of streams and rivers where they empty into the lakes or in open or protected bays along the shoreline. The quality of Lake Huron's nearshore waters depends significantly on coastal wetlands. You could think of a wetland as nature's kidney, so it helps uh, to filter out pollutants and clean the water before it enters our lake. Coastal wetlands face a number of threats. These include draining and filling for agriculture and urban development. We've already lost over two thirds of the original wetlands in the lower Great Lakes Basin, and they continue to disappear. As the number of Great Lakes wetlands shrink, the importance of remaining wetlands becomes even greater. Coastal wetlands are a really important habitat for many different types of fish, reptiles, amphibians, migratory birds, invertebrates, and more. Ontario we have eight different turtle species. We have the two that are relatively widespread and well-known, the painted turtle and the snapping turtle. But we also have things like the map turtle, which is found in large bodies of water, like Lake Huron and Lake Ontario. This is the Blandings turtle, and it's a threatened species in Ontario, and not a common one along the Lake Huron coastline, but certainly possible to see in some of the shallow vegetated wetlands of the region. We have the wood turtle, which is found terrestrially more than the other turtles. It's usually around river valleys, and it's our rarest turtle. We also have the spiny softshell turtle, which is perhaps the weirdest turtle in Ontario because it doesn't have the hard shell. Plus, we also have the musk turtle, which spends most of its time in the water, rarely comes out, so people don't see it very often. Of those, seven of them are actually at risk. The biggest problem initially is that we destroyed a lot of their wetland habitat, but where there are still pockets of good habitat, it's important to recognize these threats and find ways to mitigate them if we want to keep these turtle populations around for the long term. Our coastal wetlands provide great opportunities for recreation, so this can include hunting, fishing, canoeing, kayaking, and bird watching. They're globally rare ecosystems, and there's no places like these elsewhere in the world, and they need to be protected and respected. There's lots of places that ATV users can take their vehicles and go have fun, and these aren't one of them. ATVs go in and tear up soil that has taken maybe thousands of years to form. ATVs are particularly dangerous to turtles because it has been found that turtles have been run over by ATVs. Turtles come out of the water to lay their eggs and as they move around on land they cross roads and the adults often are hit. And that's a really big challenge because adult turtles don't normally die, historically speaking. Baby turtles died a lot, turtle eggs got eaten a lot, but the adults didn't. So the death of adults is a very big challenge. You can be a turtle crossing guard pretty easily by simply picking up a turtle and moving it to the other side. Not back to the lake, because then it has to start its trek all over again to go back to its nesting site. But if you move it in the direction it's going across the road, then that can be a really big help. If you were going to move a turtle off of the road, for most species, the smaller ones especially, you can just grab them like a hamburger and pick them up. But on a snapping turtle, these are danger zones for your hands. They could reach out and snap you. Their necks are very long. So you want to go behind the back feet. So starting about here, grab onto the shell, tip it up like a wheelbarrow, and then you're able to move it kind of like this off of the road. It's a very fast, effective, and safe method for both you and for the turtle. Anything that protects their habitat is a good start. You can participate in or coordinate a shoreline cleanup for your area. Keep shoreline vegetation and participate in shoreline restoration projects. You can learn to identify invasive species and remove these invasive species, such as Phragmites australis. In areas where we've been controlling Phragmites, we're actually able to get rid of that thick biomass through burning. The native vegetation response is, is really positive. 
Within one growing season, we can see all the native plants coming back and the habitat value for the turtles returns so they're able to go and utilize that area again for nesting and for mating and feeding and all the other required parts of their life cycle. And anything we can do to restore habitat and try and bring it back is great. Sometimes it's a matter of making the habitat that's there just a little bit better for turtles. We can look at what we call microhabitat features that might be missing from a habitat. Things like logs to bask on. If there aren't large pieces of driftwood sort of floating by and washing up on shore the way they used to, we can maybe put some of those logs back in that are partially submerged and a turtle can climb up and sit in the sun. There are many incentive programs available to help restore and protect wetlands on public and privately owned land through the Government of Ontario, Ducks Unlimited, or your local conservation authority. For more information about how to protect Lake Huron's wetlands and turtles, you can contact the Lake Huron Centre for Coastal Conservation. I think that people are really starting to realize how important wetlands are to the environment and to us. Wetlands help to prevent flooding and to clean our drinking water, and they provide habitat for a lot of really unique plants and animals that wouldn't be able to survive without them.